Well, hello, hello, all of my crafty friends. It's Kiona, the craft therapist, here again today, trying to get back on track with you guys. I am going to jump over here into design space, and today we are going to be making a card that I made um, several months ago, so bear with me. And also part three and the final of Kiona, Where Have You Been? So as you guys can see, I'm starting out by creating my card base here in design space, and then I am going to go ahead and work on my mats for my card. Now this particular card, I wanted to do a fun cut in the center of the card um, just to do something a little bit different um, and so what I have done here is I've sliced out a rectangular shape right in the center of the card and I am going to um, take these pieces that are cut out and I'm going to create a window kind of like a frame to go inside of this card and I'll be adding some acetate and things of that sort just to give this card a little bit of um if you know what I mean. I'm also going to be adding some pieces at the top and the bottom that will serve kind of as the mats for the card. And so what I'm doing is I'm just going down by a quarter of an inch on either side to create what would typically be my mats for my card. But instead of them being like four and a half by six and a half or four and three quarters by six and three quarters, like you're seeing on the right side, I had to take in account the fact that I cut the center out of the front of the card. So as you can see, I'm making my double base and I am duplicating that window several times because I want there to be some additional dimension to the front of the card. So I have created my two mats for the inside of the card. I think I duplicated that window about seven times. I have created my mat for the front of the card and we are going to continue on. And I am just creating some additional window pieces that I'm thinking I am going to want to have um, as those matte pieces on my uh, card base. So that purple piece that you saw, I'm going to mat that behind the squares at the top and the bottom. And before I lose my project, like I so often do, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that I save that. And then I went into the images and found a thank you that I liked. And I did try to find a thank you that was all connected so that when I cut it out, it cut in all one piece. Now you're seeing that I am in here with a writing font creating the inside portion of my card and I'm trying to find a drawn image that I would like from the images section to add to the inside of the card. You guys know that I like to decorate the in inner portions of my card as well as the external of my card because I just want everything to kind of look as if it all goes together. So I'm kind of creating that flourish and I'm trying to decide whether I want to do four, whether I just want to do two of them, where I want them to be placed, and I'm just kind of playing around. And once I get everything the way that I want it, then I can attach it all into design space. Now, um, I'm going to come back over here to these lavender pieces and try to figure out what I want to do with those. I'm thinking that they are going to be the matte pieces for behind these two gold pieces um, as I continue on with the card. So just kind of saving as I go because I have the worst habit and I think that when I originally started doing this card, I actually lost it and so therefore I wanted to make sure I was saving saving enough um, of the images in order to ensure that I um, was getting it all done correctly. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to start bringing in all of our pieces to our card um, so that I can show you the pieces and the images that we're going to use. This was one of the stamp timber sets, I believe from um, last year. And then I have this alcohol ink 
cardstock that I'm going to be using and playing with a little bit of alcohol inks today. I have some of those pearlescent cardstock from um, Tonic Studios as well as some Anna Griffin um, deluxe paper from Cricut. I'm also going to be using some of the Nouveau Dream Drops for this card and um, I really like these. I don't know if they came out with other colors. I have like the first four colors that they came up with and I um, don't know if they came out with any more. So this is Fairy Wings and this is that Gold Luxe um, color. And so that kind of just ties in with everything that I'm trying to use today. And then I'm using this, um, these three alcohol ink colors I thought would go pretty well um with the kind of color scheme that I was going for and I'm going to add some of the gilded alloy as well as the minded mind and then I will be using my Versamark Dazzle for my heat embossing um on this card today. So we're going to kind of go through doing this together. Um this is the gilded uh, embossing powder that we will also use. I brought out some plastic and I'm going to start out by putting some of my alcohol blending solution down on this alcohol ink cardstock that is from Tim Holtz and I'm going to start just adding in my inks. Now if you ever play with alcohol inks you know that depending upon what you put down and when you put it down you're going to get a different um a different look so if you start with the alcohol inks first you get one look if you start with the blending solution first you get one look if you use 91 percent alcohol you get a look and so i started with the blending solution because i wanted my alcohol inks to start moving immediately and i also think that when i start with the blending solution that when i go in and start adding in those alloys i feel like they start to move a little bit better for me I don't know what made me pick this combination, but I really feel like the softness of that purple and that pink um, with just a little pop of that amethyst really, really is super pretty. And I'm not usually a person that goes for a lot of the pastel -y type of colors. I am usually a bold person um, when it comes to my colors. I love purple as you guys all know I mean if you've been around at any point in time you know that purple goes in pretty much everything that I do um but I really love like that deep royal purple um but you know I will take any purple that I can get if I am having to uh get down to the wire and um in this instance I did go for more pastel colors which I like I said I'm not sure why I decided on those but I think that they went together very well. Um, you have to be very careful when you're using the alloys because they can take over pretty quickly. So, you know, I probably would not have used as much of the mind as I did, which is why I'm going back in with more colors on top. And I also noticed that when you put the alcohol inks on top of the alloys, they seem to move a bit better. Um, and it seems to break it up and disperse those colors a little bit more. So as you can see, I'm just in here having fun. I don't know uh, how everyone else is, but when I start playing with alcohol inks, it's just like a non-stopping thing like I could play with an alcohol ink panel for probably 30 to 45 minutes and just have the most fun that I have ever had and as you can see as I'm building more and more of the color up I am getting more and more intensity so it's going from that pastel -y color um to something a little more deep I particularly think if I was doing this again, I would have kind of left it with the softer colors. I really did like the softness, but I think in the end, um, with the other colors that I had chosen, that this went very well. So we've got this done. I'm going to sit this to the side and go ahead and let it dry. You can see all the shimmer that comes from using um, those different 
alloys. Now this is my card base and I'm going to be using a piece of acetate like I said in the beginning. And how I'm going to do this is of course bringing in some of my score tape, making sure that I have this centered very well. And then I am going to use the score tape to put this uh, down and get it in place. Now I used that pearlescent cardstock from Tonic Studios as my card base and I think that it was a perfect match um, because that shimmer in that purple really does remind me of that purple um, alcohol ink that I started using and it is a pretty heavier weight cardstock but because I'm going to be adding so many layers it doesn't matter that it's not like a hundred um, pound cardstock which I would normally use for my card bases it worked out really really well um, with the extra layers that I'm adding so I've taped that down on both sides and I know that you can see the tape right now but we will fix that in just a little while as we we get going with the card. So now that we have this acetate and we have our card base here, we're going to start working on these frames. You notice that I cut this out several times. I'm just going to glue all of them together and get them all stacked up because I want kind of a dimensional look in that center piece. Sometimes when you cut out the center of your card base, if you're not careful to make sure that you even evenly distribute the weight, you can have um, an issue with your uh, card being balanced. And so I try to make sure that I typically add something to the front of the card when I'm doing a cutout so that I can ensure that the inside of the card does not um, cause an imbalance to the front of the card. And you know, sometimes your card will start to fall or not be able to sit up very well. So this is the reason why I'm adding layers to one, create dimension, but also to create some balance with my card. So I'm going to go ahead and glue all of these together. I think I did five or seven of these to create a nice thick frame so that it will stand up off the card quite a bit um, and getting that glued down. I'm using my art glitter glue from maymaymadeit.com and I am cutting this out with some Nina Solar White um, 80 pound cardstock. That's typically the white cardstock that I use on a regular basis if I'm not using the Nacho Mama's cardstock from Brutus Monroe. So we're going to go ahead and finish getting this cut up. I really would like to know what you guys think um, about this card. And if you guys like those fun fold kind of uh, cards that have the dimension to it and also have like different cutouts um, with your card base. Or are you kind of a traditional card base type of person? I am very much so a fun fold um, card person. I'm always trying to think of something a little bit different and unique to do to my card to just make it stand out. Um, I've already added some score tape to this window and as you can see I've taken the score tape off on one side just so that I can try to get this lined up as best as I can before I take off the rest of the score tape and once I get it lined up the way that I want it to I'm just going to push the rest of the score tape paper out and that leaves me with this frame that looks like so. Now I did cut out a piece of this rose gold um, paper which is also from Tonic Studios and that's going to be the backing for my frame um, on my card and I have cut out the word thank you and I have also utilized some of my gold foiled Cricut vinyl and I'm going to use that to um, dress up the outside of my frame as well as to write out my thank you for the sentiment. So you guys know that I love to use vinyl on my cards. It just gives an extra bit of sparkle. I love the texture that it provides to my card. So I often use um, my um, vinyl or my iron-on. I've recently started using some of my iron-on as well because I find that I don't do as many vinyl projects as I do paper projects. So I always try to utilize some of my vinyl and my um, 
iron on in creative ways. So if you are a vinyl crafter, um, do you have other creative ways that you use your vinyl or your iron on? I would really love to know. So now I'm just doing kind of a fitting to see how I want this to look um, underneath our uh, frame here. And then once I get it to the place that I kind of want it to be, I'm going to, again, take my art glitter glue. I'm going to adhere it to this rose gold piece. And then I will allow that to dry. And then I can put the frame over the top of this. And I think that these colors are working together very well. Um, I have some of my Tonic Studios gems. I uh, fell in love with Tonic Studios and all of the uh, different uh, gems and sequins that you're able to get there. They are just phenomenal with their selection. And I'm going to use that to add some uh, shaker element to my card. Not that I was really attempting to create a shaker card, but I did believe that this was a great opportunity to add in some additional dazzle. And it always works out really well when you find um, shaker pieces that coordinate really, really well with the um, card that you're using. So as you can see, I have like that sherbety purple and pink, and then I found one that had the gold and the white. And so it just all matched up so perfectly. It was almost as if it was a match made in heaven. Now, whenever I'm using sequins, I'm always struggling because I do not know when to say enough or either I feel like I put in not enough. So as you guys continue to watch me put together this card, I am going to give you guys part three of Kiona, where in the world have you been? So, um, you know, I took you guys down the end of last year, how the beginning of this year started out and how I needed to really learn how to find balance. Um, and through a lot of difficulties, I was able to get um, my work uh, life balance uh, better. Um, I will not say that it's complete at this point. I still have work that has to be done. Um, just a personal thing where I struggle to not be able to provide um, quality service for all the people that I care to provide it to just because I am only one person and I really have to understand that. Um, however, um, as we moved on through the year, um, I had my oldest son who graduated from school this year. So he graduated from high school this year. That was such an amazing accomplishment. Um, some of you guys know that my oldest son is on the spectrum and he, um, has always worked really, really hard, um, in his attempts to, uh, become educated. And if you know anything about the autism spectrum, you know that many of our children on the spectrum um, have their very weak points and they also have what we call their niche. Um, and my son's niche is history, military, and religion. He is such a sponge when it comes to some of those areas. However, his weakest point was always math. Um, and so we have really, really struggled to ensure that he maintained some level of um, math education that would help him at least be successful in life. And one of the positive things about COVID last year was having that one-on-one -on -one time with him where, you know, the teachers didn't really know what they were doing. They didn't really know how to educate the kids and how that was going to look. I was able to take that time and really spend with him um, learning things like basic money math and 
how to uh, make change and things like that. Things that, you know, come very easy for some people and it's just not been the easiest thing for him. However, I was so, so proud of him because again, we were able to show that if you really apply yourself, you can accomplish anything that you want. It may be a little difficult and it may take you a little bit longer than it takes others, but there is really not anything that you cannot do in your life. Um, so we got him graduated and I really, really wanted to ensure that he was able to celebrate, um, for his graduation in however he wanted to. And so that did mean that I wanted to work extra hard to ensure that, um, we were able to give him all the things that he wanted for his graduation. And we were able to make that come to fruition. Um, in addition to that, we got the surprise uh, that our second son, um, who would be going to his senior year this year, is being um, provided the opportunity to forego his senior year and to go directly in to college. And so we had already started with him on a blended course. Um, so during the previous school year, not only did he excel in the COVID environment, he was able to take um, numerous college courses for college credits as well. And so to have the opportunity to then uh, forego his senior year and go directly into college was an amazing, amazing um, opportunity. And so, of course, we decided to take that opportunity. And my uh, middle son will be going to school with a major of biomolecular science. And he um, is hoping to become a psychiatrist. So he is going to be on a med track and we are just pleased beyond measure. Um, but of course that meant during the school year, we had to pay for um, additional uh, courses. And we also had to, um, pay whatever portion remained from him um, for his year of schooling. Um, he did receive over $50,000 in scholarships. However, the school that he is going to is a, a bit expensive. So um, we had to ensure that he was able to do um, what he wanted to do without any stresses of finances to burden him. Um, so we had all of that going on and then we had our youngest who is also a very bright young lady. Um, and through her efforts and fantastic achievements during school, she has been, um, nominated to enter into a advanced placement program for her school during next year. So, you know, I know that during the, uh, uh, beginning of this year, I was not able to focus so much on myself. However, you know, when you get your kids to a certain point where you find that all of the stresses and all of the struggles and all of the hard work of trying to be their guardrails in life has finally started to reap its benefits, you finally see that, you know, that moment of you did a good job as a parent, your kids are on the right path, they're doing the right things, they're they're on their way, um, is just so satisfying because I think sometimes, especially as mothers, um, and I'm sure fathers have this as well, where you consistently feel as if you don't know whether you're doing it right. You don't want to harm your children in any way. You don't want your um, choices to negatively impact them. And so to get to that place where my children are finally getting um, to reap the rewards of having such a stickler as a mother um, has been phenomenal. And so that has taken up a lot of my attention during these last few months. And now we've gotten um, my oldest graduated. We will be taking our middle son to uh, 
college for move-in day in a little over two weeks. Um, and it, it just is wonderful. And so I feel like I'm now finally getting to the place where I can start to breathe and think about me again. So you guys see, this is the card that we um, are getting created. I am so glad that you guys have kind of gone along with me on this little journey of Kiona, where in the world have you been? So that's where Kiona has been. And I have really, really missed you guys. And I am so, so happy to finally be back in a place where I can create content for you guys and be around. Like I said, I hope that you guys are um, a part of the Facebook group. If you are not, please um, come on over to Craft Therapy on the Facebook page. I'm really trying to get some interaction in that group. I really want that to be kind of my safe haven and I hope that it can be yours as well. So if you um, would like to, if that is something that you enjoy, please come on by um, and join us. I try to do fun things in there, but I'm always open to options because again, the majority of this is for you. I mean, I get a lot of encouragement and such a sense of community by being able to interact with you guys, but I really want to make sure that I'm creating things that you enjoy. So as you can see, I've kind of finished off this card with the same vinyl on the inside as I did on the outside, some heat embossing and an alcohol inking and a little bit of sequins and all of the things. I just wanted to do all the things with this card and I really think that it came out super, super cute. I was in love with it and I'm going to end it with just a few drops of my uh, Nouveau Dream Drops and I think that these drops really coordinated very well with the colors that I chose. I always try to do my visual triangle um, when I am putting in my sequins, my jewels, or my my Nouveau drops um, and I always try to work in odd numbers so that's why you kind of see some up in that top right hand corner and then down at the bottom right and left because I'm trying to create something for your eyes to kind of go into to kind of tie it all together. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that you guys like this card. If you have any questions about it, please leave me a comment below. I love chatting with you guys there, and I am really, really hoping to see you guys again very soon. Have a great day.